Great. Uh, it's another great privilege to be sharing God's Word with you guys this morning. And it's been, I must tell you, another uncomfortable week <laughs> just preparing this message. The Lord's been prodding and poking and challenging. And I won't say I hope He does the same to you, but um, <laughs> I trust that He does a deep work in your heart this morning uh, through His Word and through this message. And so, yeah, we've been talking the last couple of weeks about vision and uh, about loving God, loving people, and you should know those four R's off by heart now, reach, restore, release, reposition, and if you haven't heard any of these last few messages on our, on our vision, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel, and you'll find the recordings there. And uh, it's all in the context of this theme that we're going on at the moment of growing up and maturing. And last week, I spoke about one of the R's being restored and uh, how uh, some of the keys in, in allowing God to work on some of our weak areas. And this week, I want to tackle another one of the R's, and that is the, the, the fourth one, the reposition, uh, which refers to making a difference and doing what Jesus did. When, when, when Paul unpacked this, the, the four R's and this vision a couple of weeks ago, he spoke about this word reposition in the context of doing what Jesus did. You know, as we, as we are reached by Him and as we reach out to Him, as we are restored, as he, as he does a restoring work in our lives, as we are released into His purposes, we begin to do what Jesus did. We begin to, our lives begin, because of what He's done in us, our lives begin to flow out and impact uh, and uh, the, um, the lives of people around us. And, uh, and he repositions us to make a difference uh, in our communities, in our families, in lives around us. So I want to focus on that today, but a quick story. This last weekend, my daughter ran her very first half marathon, 21 kilometers. And uh, she had been preparing for it, and it went fabulously well. She ran a very good time, and we phoned her afterwards to find out how it went, and she was just so over the moon, and we were celebrating with her over the, pho over the phone. And then the phone call took a dramatic turn, because she started telling us about this friend of hers who ran with her dad, and um, how this dad was a, a fit, very fit marathon runner, run many marathons, and it was just so beautiful to see father and daughter running together. And in fact, the father had to slow right down to run with her daughter. And I thought, imagine that. <laughs> imagine a world in that, not in my world. Anyway, I knew what was coming next. He said, Dad, you and I, you and I, 21 kilometers. And my heart sank. She said, I'll give you some time. Let's, let's run it at the end of the year. Gives you some time to, you know, get fit and so on. And I, we laugh because I'm a part-time five-kilometer plodder at best. All right, so the, the, the very thought of running 21 kilometers is very stretching. It's, it's, it's probably possible. With, with God, everything's possible. <laughs> but it's quite stretching. And... I just thought, you know, the Lord wants to stretch us. He wants to grow us in our internal capacity, in, our, in, in impacting the lives of others. He wants to bring increase, and He wants to grow us in so many areas. You know, James 2 verse 7, 17 says, James says, you know, faith without works is dead. The outworking of your faith is seen through, through works. I'm not talking about Works to prove, prove ourselves to God and works to get salvation. No, but works that come out of a place of being reached by, by God, being a loving God, loving people. And out of this, out of this place flows, flows these, these faithful works that touch hearts and touch lives around us. Ephesians 2 says that we've been created in Christ Jesus to do good works. We've been wired. If you don't know what your purpose is, we've been wired, we've been created, we've been designed 
to encounter Jesus, to be filled by him and to allow his power and presence to flow out of us in the form of good works, to touch lives, to see people healed, to see people restored, to see people loved. And this morning I'm going to talk about us in the context of our individual lives, but also in the context of us as, as River Life. We want to see this community around us changed and impacted for the gospel. Amen? What a calling, what an adventure to live a life of good works and to allow God's power and presence to flow through us. So just to unpack this a little bit further, I want to look at the parable of the talents. It's a uh, well-known uh, parable that Jesus spoke about in the, in the book of Matthew. We're going to read the whole parable. It's quite a chunky passage of Scripture, but you know what? There's something powerful when the Word of God is read aloud. And I want to encourage you as I read this, allow, God, allow the Word of God to impact you. Receive His words. These are the words of Jesus. And uh, allow the, uh, the Word of God to impact you. Matthew chapter 25, we're going to read from four, um, verse 14 through to 30. And uh, you can, I think, read on the screens. There we go. And also in your Bibles or on your Bible apps, whatever you have there. All right. So here we go. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug it in the ground, dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, yeah, you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown, and gather where I have scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him, who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Isn't the word of God powerful? Lord, would you... Speak to us through your word this morning. As we get into it, the first thing I want to say about this parable is right at the beginning, it says, Jesus says, for it will be. Now what is the it? He's likening the parable to something. The it will be. And just before this parable, he, ta he, talks, he tells a parable about the ten virgins. And he starts off that parable by, by saying, the kingdom of heaven will be like. And he begins to tell the parable, and he likens the kingdom of heaven to being ready, to being wise, to being watchful, to being resourceful. And he tells that parable, and then he, he tells him another parable, the parable of the talents, and he starts it off by saying, for it will be. And I think it's pretty clear that the it is referring to the kingdom of God. 
He's talking about this parable in the context of God's kingdom. And the kingdom of God is where the king is. It's where his, his rule is. When we give our lives to Jesus, we enter into his king, under his kingdom rule. He becomes our king. He becomes our Lord. And we live according to his ways and his word. And, we, and when, we, when we live our lives and we produce good works, the kingdom flows through us. The kingdom impacts the lives of others. And so this, is a, this parable is about kingdom living. And part of kingdom living is growing and multiplying what God has given us. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is advancing. God is a God of increase. The kingdom of God is constantly expanding in our lives and in, in, the, in the lives of people around us. And so part of kingdom living is allowing God to bring increase and being faithful with what He's given us. So I want to mention three important truths that I believe this parable uh, tells us about this incredible king. Number one, the king owns everything. All right? And uh, in this parable, the master um, represents the king, King Jesus. And he gave, this, the master gave talents to his servants. Five to the one, two to the other, one to the other. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when you read this um, this. Word talents, you know, in the English language, the word talents means, you know, our, our gifts, our abilities, the things we're good at. But in the context of this story, it's talking about a sum of money, all right? And most scholars will say that a day laborer in, 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 in these times, if they worked for 20 years, 20 years solid, they would earn the equivalent of one talent, so one talent was actually quite a large sum of money. All right? Two talents was double that. Five talents was an incre incredibly large sum of money. And so this master generously entrusted between the three servants eight talents of, of money to, to, to his servants. Now this parable is not just about money, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. And... Um, you see, everything that the servants were given belongs to the master. And the starting point in making a difference in, in, in people's lives is understanding that everything that God has given us belongs to him. All the internal resources, all the, um, the, 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 gift, the giftings, um, what he's put inside of us, the way he's wired us, the way he's designed us, Mentally, emotionally, spiritually. He's given to us for a purpose. All the things externally. Our resources. The people in our lives. Our possessions. He's given us. He's entrusted these things to us. And it's important to, us, to, to understand, okay, what, what is it, Lord, that you've given me? And what do you want me to do with these things? Because you've given, you've entrusted, they're yours. My money is not mine, it's, it's his. The people in my life, they're not mine. <laughs> I can't control them. and They belong to you, Lord. But I want to be a good steward with what you've given me. So let's look at some of these things that he's given us. He's given us the gospel message. It's his message. It's his message, not our message. It's the message of salvation. The message that Jesus came for us. While we were still sinners, Jesus came for us. He died for us. Gave his life for us. Took the guilt, the punishment of sin upon, upon himself. What are we doing about that message in our lives personally? Are we accepting it? Are we allowing the message of the gospel to impact and change us? Or are we just saying, not for me? And maybe you have received that message and it is not just for us. It's for us to be able to be ambassadors. To be able to share this gospel, this incredible truth, this incredible salvation message with those around us. How's it going? It's not just for us, this gospel message. 
He's given us a mission. Matthew 28 talks about going and making disciples of all, um, of all nations to teach others about the kingdom of God and everything that is, that is, that is taught us. It's not just the job of pastors. <laughs> when you're in the workplace, working wherever you work, in the bank, motor mechanic, or maybe you're not working, maybe you're retired in a retirement village, bring the kingdom. Make disciples. Seek growth and expansion in the, in the area that, you, that you're in. He's given us His Holy Spirit to empower us to be His witnesses. He's given us unconditional love. He's given us an identity in Christ. He's given us people. He's given us positions to be faithful with, to see His kingdom expand. So number one, the king owns everything. Number two, the king commissions us. I've sort of alluded to this already. He commissions us. He sends us. Matthew 28, he says, go. Go and make disciples. I've given you all authority. I've given you everything you need. I'm sending the Holy Spirit to empower you. Go. The master said to his servants, yeah, the talents, now get on with it. I'm going away. Get on with it. The five-talent talent guy was productive. So was the two-talent guy. They doubled what God had given them. They were faithful with it. They brought increase. And what does that look like in our lives? Being faithful and seeing, seeing increase come from what God has given us. Maybe... Maybe you go to coffee for a... Uh, Go to have coffee with a friend. I believe that being faithful with that is leaving that friend in a better place than when you found them. Turning a five-talent coffee time into a ten-talent coffee time through your encouragement, through the words that you bring, through speaking into the person's life, through even speaking hard truth that the, he, he will thank you for later maybe. Leaving people in a better place than when you found them. That's an example of kingdom increase. I needed some help with something in particular. And I reached out to an old friend. And this friend, and I thought his help was going to cost a lot of money. And I was just, I've just been blown away with this friend's generosity, he's given me of his time, of his ability, of his resources, and he's left me in a way better place than when I first made contact with him. He's been a good steward with what, what, God, what God gave him. We were going to play a video this morning of, of Owen Parker, some of you will know, and some of you have been very generous towards him. He went off to the D-team and uh, we'll play this video next week and give more details. But some of you have been involved in this, in this process of, of seeing him go off to D-team and uh, seeing a life radically change. Some of you have been personally involved in discipling him and, uh, and helping him. That's putting our resources to excellent use. Putting what God has put inside of us and seeing a life changed. Some of you have the ability to administrate well in your workplace. What a blessing that is. There's an opportunity to, to see God's kingdom grow just through that gift of administration. Some of you, maybe you've got the ability to be a, the glue in a team environment. That's a real gift. That's an opportunity that you can take that, that thing and, and leave your, the team that you're involved in, or the teams that you're involved in, in a way better place than what you found them. That God's kingdom can be expanded, that God can be glorified through, through the gifts that He's given you. Some of you, I know there's, there's some of you in, in retirement villages and that, that are able to just be connectors and be super friendly and just leave people Smiling and, and, and in a way better place than when you found them. What a gift. Don't ever second guess what God's put inside of you. He's given to us. He's given to everybody 
something. We take what he's given us and we allow God to multiply that in people's lives and see his kingdom expand, see people left in a better place, people encouraged, lives changed. We've been commissioned to make a difference doing what Jesus did and putting our faith into action. So that's number two. Number one, the king owns everything. Number two, the king commissions us. Number three, the king rewards us. And the Bible talks about this day, this, this judgment day when Jesus returns and we'll have to be, everyone will be, have to give account for what did we do about Jesus? What did we do about this, this gospel message? What did we do? Did we accept him? Did we reject him? We'll have to give account for that. But then also, for us as believers, we'll have to give account, the Bible says, for how we lived our lives. How we live our lives makes a difference now, but it makes a difference for eternity. Taking what he's given us and using it productively and seeing it multiply and grow has eternal implications. And this parable says he gives us according to our ability. He gave the two-talent guy two talents. If you're a two-talent person and you're looking at a five-talent person and you think, wow, you know, I wish I, I, wish I had five talents. No, you don't, because God gave you two talents for a purpose, for a reason. You don't wish you had five talents because it would probably crush you. <laughs> if you own a small business and you're looking at somebody who owns a multi-million rand company and you think, yo, how come I can't do that? I wish I could do that. No, no, no. God's given you that business for a purpose. Take it and ask God, Lord, what? How, how can this thing grow? How can this thing impact your kingdom? My farm, how, 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 can, how can this make a difference for, for people that work for me, that pe- people in my community? How can, how can this farm make uh, a difference in this nation? You've given it to me for a purpose. Amen? Anyone there? We waste time when we compare ourselves to other people. It, it really is a waste of time, but we often do that. We compare ourselves. Don't second guess what God has given you. The gifts, the abilities, the, the, what He's put inside of you and what He's resourced you with. If you've been given a life group to run, be faithful with the people in the life group. If, you've been, if you're a mom with small, at home with small children, be faithful with that. Grow them. Leave them in a better place. Teach them about Jesus. Disciple them. If you've been given a class of children, leave them in a better place than when you found them. Amen? So in this parable, the faithful servants were rewarded with greater responsibility and greater joy. The five talents got, uh, guy got five, five talents more. Two talent guy got two talents more. And uh, there's this thing about joy. You see, one of the rewards that we see in this parable is this thing of joy. When we partner with what God has given us, what He's put inside of us, and what He's wired us to do, when we partner with that and we see lives impacted, we see people changed and growing, there's joy in that. We, sh- we share in the Master's happiness. We share in His joy. And you see, faithfulness is not just plodding along, I'm faithfully just plodding along. No, faithfulness, according to this parable, speaks of increase. It speaks of taking what we've given and, and Lord, would you, would you make it grow? I want to I be faithful with this so that it grows and it impacts more people and more people and makes more of a difference. So what happened was this, the one talent guy buried his talent, right? And... Uh, when I read that, it says two things about the one talent guy. Number one, he, he seemed to have a very negative view of his master. He said that the master was, you know, a hard man and he, and he reaped when he, when he hadn't, hadn't sown and so on. And it also says that he was afraid. He was fearful, so he hid his talent. And fear can cause us to do exactly that. Some of you have got stuff inside of you or you've been given 
things from the Lord, but out of fear, you putting it, putting it on hold, or metaphorically, as uh, you are bearing them and just not, not seeing how this can make a difference, not seeing how this thing can actually be a blessing to anyone. And I feel like God wants to un- unearth some of those things this morning. Example of this, I, I taught a young lady who, at a particular time in her life, she was very rebellious. She got into a lot of trouble all the time, did a lot of things that she shouldn't have done. And the music teacher at this particular school that I was teaching at discovered that she had the most beautiful voice. The most beautiful voice. And over some time, miraculously, this young lady gave her life to Jesus. And at first she was quite fearful to sing in front of people, but the Lord began to do a work in her life. She began to grow in confidence. She began to, this gift just started growing in her. It was sort of like it had been dug up and it began to grow. And to cut a long story short, she's still a, she's still a young lady, a few years on now, and she's one of the praise and worship leaders in her local church. Just because God touched her, God showed her some of the wrong thinking that she'd been having about him and about herself and restored her, and released her, and repositioned her to, to such a place where now there's, just, there's, there's this, this gift and is just being multiplied, multiplied, multiplied in her life. What a blessing. Maybe there's something that God has given you. And he wants, he wants to resuscitate this morning. Amen. So as I close, Joyce Meyer said this, nobody's been given everything. But everybody's been given something. <laughs> And God's given those things to us for a purpose. We serve a good and generous king who's entrusted and commissioned us with his kingdom resources to steward well and to be repositioned to make a difference in lives around us. I don't know about you, I want to hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. Because you took what I gave you and you were faithful with it. Amen? Let's be a church of individuals and let's be a church family and a community that leaves this broader community in a better place than when we found it. Amen.